Welcome everyone. Uh, so today we are having uh, Shelby with us that is going to give us a demonstration. Uh, so Shelby, uh, Shelby was a student uh, uh, of mine uh, two years ago and uh, in Studio 2 she did uh, the Cordomus game. Some of you may have uh, heard of it. Uh, Cordomus started as a, as a game jam project and then uh, in Studio 2 they kind of like refined it and had it more content, etc, etc. And Cordomus uh, won best in show uh, uh, in 2019, uh, it also it is also um, a game that won the Game Jam uh, in 2019, and uh, they were uh, a candidate for Best of Georgia. They were a nominee for Best of Georgia, uh, and so these are like a few uh, a few images of Cordomus, a gorgeous game with uh, with a lot of uh, a lot of heart. Uh, and Shelby has been uh, since then uh, specialized uh, in the creation of. In the creation of stylized uh, assets. So, well, Shelby, the floor is yours. Uh, introduce yourself, and that's it. It's all yours. Hey. So, hi everybody. Um, I'm a stylized environment artist. I'm currently doing like freelance and contract work, and I have a focus in stylized work. And this piece was probably my favorite and most biggest piece that I've done um, stylized. And this is kind of where I really figured out my workflow and um, kind of the way to approach stylized work. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So um, I'm going to demo this cute little stylized pot for you guys today. <laughs> um, I thought it was simple enough to get done in a short amount of time. And um, I want to teach you some techniques um, in Substance Painter with kind of filters and stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. So um, I think it's really important to have references when you're modeling stuff. So I always take real life references as well as other people's models. So I'll go on websites like Sketchfab or ArtStation or other places where you can find 3D models to look at how they've approached their wireframes or how they've kind of approached their texturing just to um, kind of get like an idea of what I want to go for. And I also like to make a mood board with a little like color palette so I can pick and choose from when I'm texturing. So I'm going to go ahead and open my Maya file here. I'm going to shove my reference on the side because I always want that open. And so let me minimize this. <laughs> okay, so I think it's really important when you are in your Maya file to set it up for um, importing into Unreal or Unity. So I got this tool from Professor Shammy a while back. Um, I can give it to you guys if you don't have it. Um, basically, I'm just going to hit Unreal Grid here, Unreal Grid here. And essentially, this is going to make it the same size grid. So you don't have any super itty bitty models you bring in uh, later. So I'm going to go ahead and use Julie as my size reference here. And I'm just going to make a layer for her so I don't accidentally click her when I'm modeling. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. So let's just get started. I'm going to just insert a cylinder. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the pivot here. So I'm going to press D on my keyboard. And I'll hold V for vertex snapping. And oops, I'm going to vertex snap this to the bottom. And then I'm going to use X on my keyboard to snap it to the grid because I don't want anything going under the floor if I'm in if I'm putting this in the engine. So I'm going to size this up kind of how I want it. Not too big, not too small. It's just a cute little guy. And when you're modeling stylized um, assets, kind of think about how simple you can make it. You don't want it to be high poly. You don't want it to have any edges you don't need need like um, you can bevelling with textures so we're not going to do any bevelling here it's just going to be really simple so that's where the dirt will be and i'm going to go ahead and taper the bottom here cute little guy and work smarter not harder you're not going to have to make a whole other one just duplicate this guy to create the pot here just kind of move it down i'm going to make this smaller just kind of cuter okay and it's for certain models, you can exaggerate your forms. For this one, it's really simple, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but if you're making like weapons and you have maybe like you're working from a concept, a lot of those have of um, really like exaggerated pieces. Maybe they're like jutting out and stuff. So always try to either simplify or exaggerate things. So I'm just going to create like this little bowl. It's cute. Create this bowl for my pot to sit in. I'm gonna go ahead and smooth these edges because they get hard when you do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and, okay. So that's pretty much done. Oh, and don't forget to always delete faces you don't need to save poly count. So go ahead and delete these guys. And then we're gonna go ahead and smush this guy back up here. So we don't want him sitting in there. Oops, 
I see I have something else selected. Like that is weird. What happened here? Oh my goodness. Okay, well, that's fine. <laughs> Just gonna extrude that. And then you can even merge the center using this little guy up here to create that face there. That's where the dirt will go. Okay. So, okay. Cool. So when I model plants, I always start with a, um, a plane. I don't know why. That's just what I do. It's kind of my workflow. Um, I'm going to go into the channel box editor here and just kind of reduce this to about four polys because I'm going to use the center. Sorry, if you hear my dogs bark, <laughs> I'm going to use the center um, here to create kind of volume later. So I want that there. So I'm going to go ahead and extrude this twice to make this leaf plant thing kind of taller. We're going to merge this to center up here. That's where the point of our leaf will be. Just going to go ahead and start tapering this guy so it looks more like a leaf. And usually when you make plants, you'll want to do planes. But for this guy, because it's stylized, um, I'm going to make it kind of chunky plants just because I like that style and I want it to be kind of chunky and cute like that. So I'm not going to worry about poly catch because we're saving polys. The idea is that you're going to save um, the poly count, oops, poly count elsewhere. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the pivot again. So press D on my keyboard, hold V to vertex snap down here. And then I learned this recently. Well, not recently, probably a year ago. Time flies. Um, we're going to press J on our keyboard. You're going to hold it and this will snap your rotations. This stuff, like, you don't have to go up in the channel editor. It's, it's really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and hold X and snap that back to the center here. I'm just going to make them a little bigger, maybe a little chunkier. OK. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to extrude this whole thing. OK. And I'm going to fix my pivot again, D on the keyboard. And then I'm going to align it, oops, align it down on this guy so it's centered. OK. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to merge this guy with target weld. I'm going to merge him into here because I want my leaf to actually come to a point. So like I said earlier, I wanted this center piece here because I wanted to create some like depth, some some uh, curvature to this guy. Because if you look in your reference, in my reference, um, some of these guys have that curvature and that line on the bottom here. So I just want to stick with that. It's good to have references so you know what to do. I forgot to mention, you can click this button up here um, in the left bottom hand corner, you'll see it's called multi-sample anti-aliasing. It smooths <laughs> the lines on Maya, like the Maya viewport, and it's so much easier to look at. So I usually like to have that um, active at all times. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and taper this guy a little bit so it looks like a little leaf. Okay, well, he got accidentally selected here, so let's push him back. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and soften this edge here. So like I said before, delete faces you don't need. So we know that these little guys are going to be inserted into the dirt. So just go ahead and delete that face there. And now, like I said before, we're going to work smarter, not harder. So um, I'm going to go ahead and UV this guy before I do anything else so that we can only texture. We don't only have to texture one leaf instead of texturing like 70. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and planar project this planar option box. I'm going to project this from the Z axis. I'm going to activate this guy so I can see where it's red. And I'm going to cut one edge here. And the shortcut for cutting, you have to have your mouse in the UV editor, is Shift X, um, just so you don't have to go through all these menus. I'm going to go ahead and unfold this guy. And see, sometimes when you press unfold, it kind of makes it chunkier. These aren't as tall as they should be here. Press hold along a few times and get that kind of more accurate, a more accurate flat reading here. And so I'm just going to shove them up in the corner because I'm going to UV the pot now. So I'm going to go ahead and UV this guy. And I know I want, let me just planar project this from the Z right now. But I know I want the dirt to be flat. So I'm going to go ahead and planar project that from the Y axis. And to select those faces like that, it's tab on the keyboard. And then you just kind of use your mouse to select those. Just nice. You don't have to select all of them individually. <laughs> go ahead and planar project this from the Y. 
So now it's nice and flat. You don't even need to unfold it. It doesn't do anything. So when you have something like this and you're going to texture it with your hand painted textures kind of flat, um, why can't I select you? What is going on? This is bizarre. Sorry, guys. Hello? What is this thing doing? That was super weird. Sorry about that. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to cut that shift X on the keyboard. And I'm going to fold it, but you see how it's curved here. I don't like that when I'm hand painting stuff because when you're trying to hand paint on the 2D view, you have to account for that curvature and it's just, I don't like that. So I'm going to go ahead and unfold this guy along a little bit. That's not really doing much. So basically you're just going to straighten these and sometimes this wonky stuff happens here that you have to fix by hand. And you can activate this guy to see where it's pinching or stretching on your UV sheet. And I'm just going to line him up like he should be. And that's, it's just slightly red and slightly blue, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, but yeah, so that's how I'm going to texture these. I want them flat and easier to texture on when you're in a 2D view or in Photoshop or something. But I'm going to do this in Substance, so I can paint directly on the um, model, but it's just easier to have this flat. I'm not going to unfold everything because you guys get the idea. It's kind of redundant. But anyway, back to the leaf. So now that we have UV this guy, I'm going to... I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it twice. I'm gonna keep an original because that's I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring the original into substance with me later. But I want to make two different variants to put on the pot. So I'm gonna make one rotate forward. Kind of you can see here they kind of rotate. Sorry, my dogs are barking. They're nuts. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna rotate them upwards, and then I'm gonna have one rotate kind of backwards just to create some variation here. So. Sorry, guys. Uh, I'm going to press B on my keyboard to activate soft select, or you can go to your modeling toolkit here, and there's a whole little menu here to control it. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and slightly rotate that forward. Just drag it forward a little bit to kind of get that kind of curved guy like in there. You can do the same thing on this guy. I'm going to do it backwards. Just some variance here. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this guy up to my pot. I'm just going to control D. I'm going to hold V to vertex snap this up to the middle. And I'm just going to kind of rotate him outwards and then shove him in the dirt. <laughs> uh, I mean, I want him a little thinner, kind of match those. They're kind of chunkier at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and size it up a little bit. The first layer should be kind of bigger. So now he's there. And I'm going to move the pivot to the middle so when I'm rotating around, it'll be easier. So I'm just going to hold X on my keyboard. What is going on here? Oh, he got weird. Hold on a minute. You can go into our tool settings and reset our pivot or change it to world so that it um, isn't following along with where the object's pivot is. So I'm going to hold X and just move that to the center of the grid so that I can rotate him around a little bit. So I'm just going to rotate, maybe duplicate this five or six times. Okay, actually these guys need to come in a little bit. So that first layer needs to be kind of close together. When you're layer layering these leaves, um, they need to be kind of offset so it doesn't matter where they go. All right, that looks good. I'm gonna bring the other guy up here too. Be on the keyboard to vertex snap. I rotate it outwards. Make it a little bigger. Okay, shove them back in the dirt. <laughs> and then same thing. Just kind of, just kind of play with them. Put them wherever, you, wherever, it doesn't matter. Because it's just going to be covered here by more leaves anyway. So you get the idea here. Just kind of mess around with this till you're happy with the first layer. Let me make this guy come up. So yeah, so that's the general idea is you kind of rotate, make maybe eight or nine, however many you want. And then the idea is you duplicate it, control D, move it upwards. I'm gonna combine these guys so I don't have to individually move them. I'm gonna shrink them a little bit. Then I'm also gonna shrink them this way so that they start climbing upwards. If that makes any sense. They start tilting upwards a little bit. And then you can rotate it around, create those layers like that and then you do this a few times it's kind of tedious and you can move them around individually create that variance you know 
like unselect soft select with B. So you get the picture. So this takes a while. So I'm not gonna <laughs> not gonna do the whole thing here. I have a finished one. So we don't have to just sit here and watch me do that for a while. So, so go ahead and take this finished one here and let me fix this pivot kind of down here. Okay. Again, I'm gonna hold B on the keyboard and just whoop, move them on up there. I'm gonna shove them back in the dirt. <laughs> and so you can see they're all kind of like the same from the top view. We don't want that. We want them to be different. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate soft select again, which is B on the keyboard and move these guys. Kind of twist them in different directions. Maybe rotate them this way. So each leaf should get some little variance here so that when you texture it, and even though you're calling for the same texture on the texture sheet, it's going to be the same one each time. It'll just create some variance, some variety, make them all unique. Even just, you can even just size them down or whatever here. It doesn't matter. Just play with it. And that's a really grueling process. So I'm not going to do this for every leaf. I actually have the finished product over here. So that's our guy. And before you go into substance, um, go ahead and take one of these guys with you. Just kind of size them up, the original leaf. So sometimes when you're in substance, this overlapping of these meshes here, when you're trying to like paint over it, it, it reads that overlap, even though it's the same UV, it'll read the overlap and it'll do this like weird stuff. So I always just bring in a flat one that's not affected by anything so that I avoid that problem. Um, and then I also got this tool from Professor Shami, and I just like to go into general tools and tools. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and press Ngon select to make sure that I don't have any Ngons. You don't have to go through all the Maya menus to figure that out. Just a quick little guy here. Okay, so that's kind of it for Maya. I already have an FBX ready here in Substance. So uh, move my notes here. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing you're going to do when you go into Maya, or I'm sorry, Substance, is press C on your keyboard. Uh, this activates base color mode, or your lighting, or your drop down menu here, and go to the base color channel. And the only reason I do that is because I don't want any of the lighting from the material uh, mode affecting the way I hand paint something. So that just avoids all that getting in the way. And I actually just kind of delete these guys because when I'm exporting, I don't want all these blank maps. Um, so I just go to texture set texture set settings and I'll delete all these guys so I don't have extra files that I don't need. My process, I have a very organized process. So I'll start by creating, oops, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's just a name. Uh, I'll create folders for every piece that I'm going to um, texture. So I have one for the, show you here, oops. I'll have one for succulent, one for dirt, one for pot, one for plate. Today I'm gonna go over the pot. Um, just because for time's sake, I'm not gonna do all of it. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and add a black mask to this guy. Right click black mask, add black mask. And we're gonna go into our polyfill tool. That's also four on the keyboard. The brush is one on the keyboard, erasers two, this projection is three, and four on the keyboard is polyfill. fill. So I'm gonna go ahead and select these faces of the pot to create a nice little mask, nothing else in the way, okay? And then my process would be setting up base colors for each um, each piece, kind of blocking out the colors here. I'm gonna color pick from my uh, color palette here. This is kind of dark though, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna change that a little bit. Oh, that's good. So I'm just gonna call this base color. And I'm just gonna duplicate this layer and add a mask to it. I'm gonna call this shadows. So basically my process would be kind of identifying where I want the light source to, to be. And I'm gonna create shadows where the light won't touch, you know, et cetera, highlights where, they, where it is. And I'm gonna do this kind of faking gradients because I mean, if there's a way to create gradients in substance, I don't know yet. Um, so I kind of fake this uh, my own way. So I'm gonna go ahead and color pick this from my reference, that nice dark here. And when you're making a color palette, um, Try to not use like blacks or whites, like don't use black or white to shade. Don't ever do it, just don't. Um, so let's say I have my color here. I'm gonna make it redder, kind of more saturated and darker to make those shadows pop. Um, little tip 
bit for you guys in here. It's fine. <laughs> Sorry. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started creating these shadows. So uh, typically you'll be on this screen for this texture set list. When you open Substance, I'm going to go into Display Settings and I'm going to scroll down until I find wire, uh, the wireframe view. I just like to have this active so I know how far up to go or you know, to avoid certain polygons that I don't want affected. And actually, I'm going to go to my polygon fill tool and I'm going to fill this room here, just underneath here, because that's where light won't really touch. And I'm going to go over that with my basic soft brush. And when I'm in Substance, um, I typically don't use the stroke capacity. I've learned that just using a really low flow kind of works better for me. Um, it just doesn't work the same that it does in like Photoshop and other tools. So I'll just use a really fl low flow brush here. This one's kind of higher than I usually go. And I know this is going to look crazy <laughs> for a minute, but I promise it'll look all right in a second. So I'm going to go over that. I'm going to deselect these faces here using, oops, using my polygon fill tool here. Just delete, you know, you don't need that there. So I'm going to delete it. I'm press X on my keyboard to get to the like black mask mode to erase it. And I'm just going to feather this out here so it's not as kind of sharp and then it's pretty dark so I'm going to go over this again the whole thing my pen here actually that's too much <laughs> I'm going to go over with my pen and just lightly erase this guy so it's like a subtle effect here it's still a little dark you get the point just just a nice little shadow there. And then we're going to do the same thing on the bottom here because the plate is going to prevent the light from kind of touching there. So I'm going to use a higher flow and you can affect this using control and your left mouse button um, and moving up to affect the flow, the size, um, the same thing, but with the right mouse button, if you don't already know. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, just darken this guy. Then we go back into my like eraser mode with X and then just kind of soften this out. Okay. Just soften it. Nothing too crazy here. Okay. That looks good. And then we're going to do kind of a similar thing, but just kind of really rough on the inside here because the dirt was going to, you know, the dirt will make little dirty and it's just not getting as much light so we're just gonna roughly kind of color that guy in okay and then i'm gonna erase a little bit so it's not too dark okay cool so again i'm just gonna go in to this polygon fill tool and just make sure there's no shadow color here on these two faces here because that's where the light's going to hit so we don't want that there so then, now that that's done i'm just going to go ahead and duplicate my shadows um layer i might call this highlights not very creative with my name kind of to the point so i can find it quickly later i'm gonna go ahead and color pick if i can actually see it <laughs> go ahead and color pick from my reference here and I'm actually just going to go ahead and select all these faces on this top uh, like piece here. Um, and don't worry, I'm going to smooth this out so it's not as crazy. So I'm just going to go over this again. Oh, that's too big. I'm going to go over this. So the idea here with what I'm doing right now is I'm going to create like a rounded edge here so it doesn't look sharp. <laughs> so you can kind of fake your bevel here. And the whole point is that you fake your details and your textures so you don't have to go sculpt them or, I mean, you can sculpt them and then paint them in. Um, but the idea here is that you're not wasting poly count on your details. So see, it's not, it's not perfect because I'm trying to do it semi-quick, but it just gets rid of that really sharp edge here. I'm gonna do the same on the inside, but I don't want very much on the inside because the light's really not gonna get in there much. So just kind of erase that. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. 
All right, cool. So I'm also going to highlight just this like bottom part here, just with like a nice line. Um, so you can see here, like we have some here in our reference and here we have some highlights and same here, kind of highlights in the bottom. So I'm just going to do the same thing. Um, let's go in really quickly, kind of roughly, doesn't matter. I'm going to fix it in a second. Okay. And then I'm just going to use my polygon fill tool again, just erase where I don't want it. Cool. And that's kind of harsh. So I'm going to smooth that out. Maybe a bigger brush. Just kind of smooth it out. Okay. Just smooth it out. Nothing too crazy. And now he's howling. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. It's still kind of bright, but whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Maybe just go over it once lightly. Yeah, cool. That looks good. So now that we've created our shadows and our highlights, I like to go down here and I'm just going to duplicate shadows again, clear the mask. I'm going to call this shading, dark shading. So like I said, not very creative with my names. <laughs> just kind of to the point here. I'm going to take that same basic soft brush and I'm going to think about like when a player is looking at this, I kind of want this area to be where he's gonna, where the player will see head on. And then over here, I'm just gonna like fake that there's not as much lighting there. So like the lighting sitting here. So I'm just gonna, <laughs> not very good at explaining, but I'm just gonna start shading in here, kind of creating like a rounded effect here. Okay, that was ugly, let me fix that. <laughs> uh, just kind of lightly drawing in here to create some variance in this color. And this, uh, and the shading here. So, you know, you'll start seeing this shading here. I think it just looks nice. Kind of create that on the same side. On the other side, I'll do the same thing here. So, less light up here and down here. So, just kind of connect it. Okay. Like I said, I work in really low flow numbers. Like I'm using like one and three right now. So just what works for me. Oops. So it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to go over it anyway with something else. And you can always go into your um, capacity and change it if it's too dark or something. I'm going to go into my 2D view here. See, this looks kind of weird. So I'm going to fill this in. <laughs> OK. I think it needs to be filled in a little bit. All right. So I like that this, I like the way this looks from this front view here. Now it's auto saving. <laughs> uh, we're gonna do the same thing on this rim here. Oh, that is really dark. <laughs> so just the same thing here. Okay, other side. You're just kind of creating the illusion that this is, you know, it's receiving light. Maybe it's not receiving light on this side. And then, yeah, somewhere. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this guy. We we'll call it dark textures. Now I'm gonna come in with a different, um, with a different brush. Typically, I usually only work in the basic soft. Um, but for this kind of uh, material, material, um, you know, clay has like grains in it and it might be kind of dirty and it has some variance in it. So I'm going to use this watercolor brush. I used to use dirt, the dirt brushes, but I find that this watercolor brush has this like nice, like layering painterly effect. So I'm going to use that. Um, and you can also just find some like on substance share, you can find some nice brushes there too, but this is what comes with the, um, with the program. So I'm just going to go ahead and use a really low flow. Oh, I got to clear this man. That's my bad. Cool. So I'm gonna use this low flow brush here. And I'm just gonna be a little higher. I'm just gonna lightly go over this to create that variance. See it, it nicely layers without you having to do too much work. Work smarter, not harder. So 
just gonna go in here. Same thing. Okay, this guy too. Oh, what happened here? I don't like that. Oh, no. That happened in the shading, so I'm just gonna take an eraser. Just erase that <laughs> really quickly. Okay. Back to adding some whoop. Back to adding some texture here. Same thing. I'll fill that in here. Okay. Cool. Like I said, it needs to be darker where the light won't touch. So you can always go in here and maybe take down the opacity a little bit so it's not as bright. Okay. Maybe I, I kind of like it as a... kind of like it like this. So next thing we're going to do is going to duplicate both these layers. Clear the masks. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call this one light shading. light textures and then I'm again I'm just going to take that highlight color that same light color fix the opacity here so it's, it's a new layer and then I'm just going to take my basic soft brush and I'm just going to highlight ever so slightly just so lightly where guys gosh sorry dogs barking that's what they do so I'm just going to highlight ever so slightly here Okay, just create that variance. Oop. Okay. I think that's a little too. A little too bright there. Still too bright. It's fine. There we go. So, kind of creating that, like, bam, there. That's where it's, like, it's kind of shiny, you know. Whatever. Just play with it. <laughs> same thing on the rim there. And the same thing over here. Okay on the rim. Doesn't need to be perfect. Okay. And then we're going to go in with that watercolor brush again on this layer, the light textures, really low flow here. We're going to go over everything. Well, not everything. We're going to go over this, just to kind of create that textury look to it. And then I'm also going to kind of go over these texture, these dark ones here to add some pops of color or pops of light into the um the dark sections I'm just gonna tap it really lightly and kind of i don't want to like drag it into there so it's not as strong so i just like the way this it it kind of fades into each other almost but it's also creating that like grainy texture that um clay might have or like you know pottery that kind of thing so same thing up here and it looks painterly too, so I, I just like it. I think it looks nice. I think it's good practice to use um, kind of textury brushes like this when you're doing hand painted stuff sometimes. So, depending on what you're working on, so you don't have to work too hard I'm trying to achieve that with a normal brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and go, go into my highlights. Go back to that basic soft brush here. Go into the like eraser mask mode, black mask mode. And I'm just gonna slightly, that's too much. I'm just gonna slightly erase where these uh, highlights are on that side because that's where it's dark. So you don't want too much light being there, right? So, cool. That looks good. So next thing I would do is I'm gonna start creating blemishes here. So um, when you look at, oh, before I forget, before I forget, take your black mask with your polygon fill and just kind of erase underneath here so there's not some light weird stuff going in there. Same thing with the light shading. Go in with that polygon fill tool and just erase just so it's like a nice dark shadow under there. Okay, so when you're doing stylized work, you always see some blemishes, whether they be spots or cracks or dents, whatever, whatever it may be. There's always some blemishes on the textures just to add that like that oomph, that detail to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, oh my god, <laughs> I'm gonna add um, a cracks layer here. I'm just gonna call cracks. 
so I can draw kind of over um, my highlights because I'm going to add some on the rim there. So I'm going to just select my dark color again, my shadow color. Yeah, let's go right here. Maybe like right here. Okay, where is that on? Where is that? Okay, that's there. So I'm just going to go ahead, just start, start adding some blemishes. Don't need to be too fancy, just bam, he's done. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, let me kind of, oops, feather this out here on the bottom. Oops. So it doesn't look crazy from the bottom. Not that anyone's going to go and look. Um, and then what you want to do is uh, like maybe darker, right? So to create that illusion that it's like actually devoid of like, space or whatever, I'm just going to take an even darker color and I'm just going to so lightly, like very slightly kind of draw in there with that dark color to kind of it's very subtle. And then we're going to go ahead and clear our mask and make crack highlights. Next highlights. So we're going to highlight the edges of our blemishes here because that's going to create like the illusion that it, that it's actually like 3d you're kind of it's almost like a normal map like you're bumping out the sides so that it looks oh that looks crazy what just happened i'm gonna kind of bump out the side here just to give it that like oomph like it's actually catching light because it you know it's a crack so i don't like this point so i'm just gonna take away that point here Okay, so now it looks like a little blemish, little little nick in the texture. So eh, maybe not too bright. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so you get the idea. So you make a few of those. You know, you can make an actual like where is it? You make like an actual crack. We can do that really quickly. To show you guys. Um, where is this? There it is. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a little crack here. Just a nice little... He's just... Oh, somebody dropped it. Now he's cracked. Oh no. So, you know. But then you can clean it up using your black mask here. Kind of make it uh, more pointy. Okay. Whatever. Doesn't need to be perfect. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So um, I don't know if this one really needs that darker color in here. We'll see. Oh boy, that is bright. <laughs> Take a uh, lower flow brush here, just to slightly and add that layer of darkness in there. Yeah, that helps. So just slowly layer that. And then we're going to highlight the sides of this again. Now, because this is darker down here, we'll erase our highlights. Um, not erase them, but kind of feather them out so they're not as bright. That is very bright. I do not want that. Okay. Sorry, guys. I am nitpicky, so just kind of, you know, block that in really quickly. Okay. Now I'm going to use like the eraser mask thing black mask and just kind of just kind of it's kind of dark down here so there you go just that slight illusion that like okay you can it's kind of bumped out there see like highlight a little bit of the edge there okay like lights catching it right there same thing on this side so you get the idea here all right Cool, that looks awesome. So, uh, I like I like to add little dots. So you see here, like a lot of these guys have dots on them, just little little dots. So, see so like here, little dots. So I'll make a whole separate layer, and by the end, <laughs> you have like a hundred layers, but it's worth it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clear these masks again. 
all this light dots and then dark dots and I'll take my again that basic soft brush you don't have to do the dark dots um, where it's dark you can just put them wherever you want it just breaks up um, it just breaks up the, the uniformity of it almost I don't know I think it looks nice so just always add blemishes when you're doing stylized stuff just always 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 just pushes it so much further okay and then you can also do big ones so i'll take a hard brush for those just that basic hard let's go over here and just hold on <laughs> let me do a lower full brush here just a little it's a little guy all right just a little guy there and then you can highlight the edge of that maybe maybe the light one eh, we'll, we'll do a dark highlight here so just kind of highlight the edge of that guy it's a little dark but it's okay so yeah so the whole idea is just to add a bunch of little details little blemishes and then um so this was pretty you know straightforward just kind of the same brushes but to achieve the look that i did using the uh, like filters and stuff for these leaves. So um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how I achieve those lines without having to really do anything crazy. So those are what I drew on, just these like ugly squiggly guys. And then you can apply a filter. So I'll just go ahead and demonstrate that for you guys. So I'm just going to insert a fill layer here. I'm just going to call this stripes. Okay. I can type today stripes so and then never use pure white even if the lines themselves like here it's just don't do it it's bad practice so hi i'm gonna take this from my color palette it's like slightly grainy yellow i'm gonna add a black mask to it so i'm just gonna go in with that like basic soft brush honestly you can do whatever oh let me show you what i meant about that weird overlapping stuff happening so here's my flat guy here and it's just gonna like do you see this it's so weird i don't know why substance does that so that's why we bring in this guy so we get straight on him so it's gonna you know doesn't matter because that filter is gonna make it look crazy anyway so you don't have to spend so long kind of texturing those guys or i'm sorry making those guys look all chunky you can just i'm just quickly doing this just to demonstrate it doesn't have to be pretty just kind of when you look at the reference here, they are broken up randomly. So I just, I like to kind of stay true to what it actually is. Even though it's stylized, it's still referencing a real life plant. And that's a zebra plant. So just kind of, just kind of, whatever. doesn't matter. You get the point. So I'm going to go ahead and right click my mask. And then I'm going to go down to add filter. And I thought warp would be good for this one at first. Warp is a good um, filter for things, but for something this like large, like at this scale, um, I just didn't like it. It's like, it looks like, it just doesn't look great. So I was like, okay, maybe I won't use warp. It's like maybe bevel, bevel didn't look good. So then you can go, and I just found blur slope and I like the way it made that kind of fragmented, like chunky look to it with adding some like variance without having to hand paint you know all that variance it's just nice and it does get pretty crazy the higher intensity you go so or you can make it more subtle you know your heart's desire here and so what is going on here yeah so i achieved that look by doing that and then uh for the under there's kind of like a, a shadow underneath it um i basically duplicated that layer i'll just go ahead and show you <laughs> I duplicate that layer, I bring it underneath. I'm gonna change the color to like a darker, like green, like a muddy kind of color. I'm gonna go onto my mask, I'm gonna add filter here. I'm gonna add a bevel to it. I'm sorry, that was a blur. I want a bevel. I'm gonna add a bevel to it. And I'm just gonna kind of gently nudge this until I see that kind of drop shadow beveling it so it's just a quick way to not have to go in and draw every single shadow okay so yeah um 
I'll show you guys the finished product here. So I know it looks kind of different. <laughs> uh, I just did this really quickly. So this is kind of what I meant by all those weird dot guys on there and some cracks. Um, I added like one little guy here. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's kind of it. Um, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, I do have uh, a question. Um, <laughs> when you go to sure. uh, when you go to then export that into uh, whatever engine, uh, since you have yeah. that extraneous leaf there, how do you mm -hmm. how do you deal with that? So typically, when you're in Maya, you'll save one, and I usually just I'll export this guy and I'll call it like succulent underscore like for texturing. Okay. Um, but if you're gonna bring something into the engine, just export this guy, and you don't have to worry about the leaf; it's not gonna affect it just just export the one piece that you want and then just bring that into the engine and even though it's like <laughs> in your substance file because it's only because taking it's overlap right in that yeah texture. so right so um it's not actually going to take this into the engine so long as you take a different fbx with just okay. your yeah and um i'll go ahead and show you guys something so because i deleted all those channels it's only gonna um export base color um when you're doing stylized work, if you're going to use cell shading, this is kind of the approach you're going to do, I like cell shading and all that. So I don't want like normals and all that, but you can do normals. It's just going to affect the way the flat colors look. But yeah, any more questions? Uh, another question. Yeah. Um, when you because uh, you mentioned that you're like sort of faking the the lighting yeah and you're texturing how do you yeah. account for that in engine so <laughs> um typically when you're faking the lighting like that you're not going to have a lighting in your engine unless it's cell shading so it'll it'll still look good with cell shading the cell shading is going to like you know you know the wild looks um i don't my workflow is that I don't typically have lighting affecting my model. Um, okay. This is for like flat textures or cell shading and stuff like that. Um, if you don't want it to, if you don't want to fake your lighting, just make sure you have gradients kind of going from, you know, top or the bottom will be usually darker and then top you'll have like um, a lighter. It's, you can see it here on the leaf. Um, so that way when you are uh, having lighting, it won't, um, it won't look crazy like what I did here. See this one, my original one, I didn't really, quote unquote, fake the lighting as much. Um, it's just kind of variance. So if it did want to have lighting affect it, it, it won't look crazy. Yeah, so. On that, um, on that thing also, like she's faking the occlusion. Uh, so mm -hmm. that means that potentially that pot, you can put it and you can, you can light it. The occlusion is going to behave the same no matter what, except if your right. light was coming from the bottom and things like that. So if you look at Blizzard, for example, their method of like painting some of the textures in Overwatch and things like that, they can still mm -hmm. have lighting and they can still bake a little bit of lighting and a little bit of highlights and stuff like that right. without being too crazy. It's still compatible with uh, any lighting model that you would uh, that you would pick. Right. Any more questions? <laughs> Uh, yes, I have a question real quick. Did you say that we uh, you would let us use the uh, program that you used in Maya for like sizing and stuff? Uh, you mean like this stuff? These little these little guys? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can give you guys those. Um, I got them from Professor Shammy. It's just um, this is a nice little toolkit. It has like something called like Easy Circle. I'll go ahead and show you guys what that is. I find these things just it just really makes your workflow a lot um, better. I'm going to go ahead and just bump that up to like 20. And so this is something I always use on this guy. So you'll use easy circle and it creates a circle in your mesh. It's great. You don't have to cut it out yourself. So um, yeah, I'll go ahead and give you guys these. Um, go ahead and that one and then the um, that Unreal Grid one. That Unreal Grid one's too uh, cool as well, wherever that I put that. Um, it has like you can have you can adjust um, how big the squares are. You can insert like a character reference or a door reference or a wall. So really useful. So yeah, I'll go ahead and give that to you guys. Anything else? Well, 
Well, if, if we don't have any more questions, that, that's awesome. Uh, if you want to post the thing, you can post it maybe on the Discord server mm -hmm. uh, in general or things like that. That way can, sure. people can uh, can uh, grab it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it looks very good. I mean, it's... Uh, I love that little that little plant and... Uh, I'm, a big fan of, <laughs> I'm a big fan of like painterly effects. Uh, yeah. Uh, as I said, so I think it's, uh, it's good for students to kind of see uh, see how you do it, uh, mm -hmm. and yeah, you you are like you are super confident in uh, in Maya now, and, and, and that's, <laughs> yeah. that's super great to see. Okay, guys, uh, everybody, thank you so much uh, for coming. Um, <clears throat> Zoom is going to kind of like uh, process that thing. Uh, I'm going to show the. I'm going to kind of cut it. Uh, you know, put like a little, a little, uh, a little image before, etc. I'll show it to Shelby, and uh, when she gives me the thumbs up, uh, I'll put it on YouTube, and I will provide the link, and I will also provide the link on the GDN. Uh, Shelby, awesome. So Shelby is on our Discord. If you have any questions and things like that, feel free to yeah. contact her. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, we finally did it. Uh, it was originally <laughs> planned for November. Yeah. But it was kind of like getting so close to finals that we kind of decided to kind of uh, um, reschedule it mm -hmm. at the beginning of the following quarter so that you guys would be a little less busy and less less focused on, on your work. Uh, but I think that this will help a lot of people for the the, the game design class and, and, and potentially for the Studio 2 class because uh, we are definitely going to get like some stylized stuff. Uh, so awesome yeah. uh, uh, and uh, super glad to see uh, some of my old students. <laughs> uh, thank you guys. Uh, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, I think we have uh, more presentations that are planned uh, this quarter, so I'll announce them once they get uh, solidified. Thank you very much, everyone. Yes, Goodbye thank and have you. a great weekend. Have a great Goodbye. weekend. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank Take you. care. Thank you. It was really cool seeing yeah. your workflow.